Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. AITA, for sending my ex's secret request to her parents after she tried to manipulate me. I, 26M, broke up with my girlfriend of four years, Mary, 27F, about a month ago because she asked me to open our relationship. It is was, and always will be, a significant line in the sand for me, something I had made clear to her in the past. We had a great relationship overall, but looking back now, the only thing that stands out is how, over the last few months, she started making more and more sexual jokes about some of our shared friends. Some involved her being with them, others were about threesomes, etc. I won't lie, I played along a little but consistently made joking responses like, you're more than enough for me, or I don't like sharing. I never took any of it seriously, because why would I? until she asked, and I realized she was probably trying to gauge my response and see how open I was to the idea. About a month ago, when we were getting ready for bed, Mary asked me bluntly, if I asked you to open the relationship, would you? This might sound corny, but it was like I had an out-of-body experience, and all those previous jokes and comments suddenly made sense in as she's trying to butter me up to the idea kind of way. I went numb for a second. To her credit, she must have seen how freaked out I was and asked if I was okay. I pretended I didn't hear her and asked her to repeat herself. She was hesitant to do so, kept saying she didn't say anything, and only repeated it when I insisted. Then I turned on voice notes, set it to record, and put my phone down to talk to her. I don't remember much of the conversation, I just tried to stay calm and keep her talking, but the note ended up being just over an hour and a half long. Listening back, it felt like I heard a conversation between two strangers. She trickled truth her way through it, ultimately sticking to the idea that she hadn't been cheating, didn't have anyone specific in mind, but had been fantasizing about mutual friends and people at work. She thought they'd be open to something if she asked. Much of the conversation involved her being defensive and me trying to extract information, without escalating into an argument. I spent much time soothing her and making her comfortable to keep talking. The apartment is mine, and I suggested we take a break a few nights later, so she went to stay with a friend for the weekend. After talking separately with some of my friends and sisters the following Monday, I concluded we were done. I suggested she start looking for somewhere else to stay. She was upset but didn't argue and had most of her stuff out, at her parents' house, by the end of the week. Two days ago, her mom reached out on WhatsApp to say she was disappointed in how I'd handled everything. The message wasn't framed as a reprimand, it was more like she wished we could have worked it out. She then added me to a group chat with her husband Mary's stepdad, and they both tag-teamed me saying we could work it out, I was making a mistake and shouldn't overthink things. I eventually got it out of them that Mary had fed them a very vague story that we had broken up because she'd wanted to take the next step in our relationship, I'd freaked out, we argued, and she was effectively kicked out. Her stepdad leaned on the fact that he thought I was more mature than this, and her mom kept repeating how disappointing this situation was. So I was pissed. In the heat of the moment, I told them I had a recording of our conversation that would explain what she meant by taking the next step. I initially tried to email them, but it was a hassle, so I eventually shared it via Google Drive. In the meantime, I took a few screenshots of texts between Mary and me, ones where she made jokes and comments about sex with our friends and a woman from her office, and sent them to the group chat. I haven't heard back since, it's been two days and I don't feel as vindicated anymore. A good number of Mary's comments were about other women, and now I'm freaking out because I don't know how open she's been about her sexuality with her parents. I also think I shouldn't have engaged or felt the need to prove my innocence to them. AITA? I've checked in with friends and on social media, and it doesn't look like any fallout. Also, Mary blocked me a week ago, before I spoke to her parents, so I can only contact her if I go in person. And at this point, is it too late to give her a heads up or check in? To address a few points I've seen in multiple comments. We don't live in the US, and there are no laws against recording private conversations here. I'm not proud of doing it but it wasn't illegal. Mary and I had several mature, calm conversations about what we wanted from this relationship. Mary wasn't sure if she wanted to stay and admitted to self-sabotaging by asking about opening the relationship. Mary and I have been friends since we were 11, her mum was my coach when I swam competitively, and our friend group and families are very close and intermingled, so she was wary about what would happen if we went on a break or entirely broke up. I was not trying to punish her for being open to polyamory. Mary and I are both bi and when I was in my last year of high school, I was involved in an inappropriate relationship with a teaching assistant. He was arrested and registered as a sex offender, but during the time we were involved, he convinced me to be with other people as well. He effectively pimped me out for a year and physically assaulted me when I eventually said no and tried to cut him off. 
Mary knew all of the above, she helped me through it then, and it was evident that I couldn't do something like that again. I know what I went through wasn't an open relationship, but it was very much framed as one, which has stuck with me, I would never punish other people for doing it, but I made this all very clear to Mary and the other serious relationships I had before her. I've carried a lot of issues from then into future relationships, and I am in therapy and have worked with Mary not to punish her for what other people have done to me. Still, as great and supportive as Mary was, she did have an issue with trying to gaslight me. She would say one thing and then, typically during an argument, would vehemently argue otherwise and genuinely make me question myself. It took her coming to therapy with me, and me sometimes showing her texts, for her to realize this was a problem, and we had been working on it together. Recording her was still not right, but it wasn't an attempt to gather something incriminating, it was just a response. It was a poor response that I shouldn't have done, but it wasn't malicious, nor did I intend to send it to anyone at the time. Also, since making this post and reading your replies, I've gone back to her parents to apologize. I really refried to tell them that she wasn't being honest and that I wanted to keep things private, but they kept going about me being immature and how disappointing this was. I'll be honest. I got a bit angry again after rereading some of their messages, but it didn't warrant my outing Mary the way I did. I appreciate everyone's judgment. Update Hi everyone. I want to preface this with a genuine thank you. I came to this sub because my mind was all over the place yesterday, and you all helped me clear it up a little, even those who weren't trying to be helpful. As a result, on reflection, I'm not sorry for recording her. I understand that people don't like the idea of being recorded by an intimate partner, especially during an intimate conversation, and you, naturally, support Mary on that front out of solidarity, but all I can say is, you do not know what Mary is like or what our relationship was like either. A little before she came to therapy with me, and the incident that pushed me to try and get her to go with me, Mary texted me to pick her up a Smarties McFlurry on the way home from work. When I brought it home and gave it to her, she told me she'd asked for a dairy milk one, something they don't even do here anymore, and rolled her eyes at me, saying, not listening to me again. Trying to show her what she had sent led to a 15-minute shouting match, which resulted in her throwing her ice cream at the wall and shattering my phone screen. That's one incident of many. She once told me I was flirting by holding the door open for a group because there were girls you were trying to impress in the group, and she went on a long tirade about how my male chivalry was just a selfish way to gain attention from women beyond her. I'm not apologizing anymore for recording her. I wouldn't have had such a visceral need to defend myself if I hadn't been with someone who kept hurting me. I made that recording because I knew she would lie, and she did. But I thought she would lie to me, not to other people and I wanted it strictly, so I had her words on my phone should she start claiming she said anything else. At the end of the day though, we didn't need any of that, and we parted maturely. I understand many of you won't believe that was my intention, and I'll have to live with that. Beyond all that, I am still sorry for sending it to her parents to get back at her. Her parents have always been very pro-LGBTQ+, so although it wasn't right to out her, I was massively overthinking the idea that they might harm her or kick her out. At most, exposing her interest in polyamory would have embarrassed her, but nothing I shared would have put her in any danger. That being said, I saw red during that exchange, and saw this as a way finally to show people I wasn't misremembering things. It was spiteful and vindictive, and I can see so many different ways I could have dealt with the situation more calmly, but I was angry and didn't do any of them. And for that, I am still sorry. As I said in the edit to my previous post, I apologized to her parents. I apologize for getting angry, cussing them out and sharing private information about their daughter with them. I fully acknowledge that I was spiteful and that it was a harsh escalation of a response. Anne and Paul, what I'll call them for this post, accepted my apology at face value but asked if I could come over for lunch this afternoon to have an actual conversation. It was nice but awkward too. Mary wasn't there. I apologized again and Paul and Anne said they were sorry for interfering and not giving me a chance to tell my side. We both agreed we'd misbehaved and that, in the future, we wouldn't involve ourselves in this topic. We left things on relatively better terms, but I won't talk to them for a while. Above all, they are Mary's parents, and they will always be in her corner, as parents should be, so, keeping my distance is in everyone's best interest. As for Mary, she unblocked me late last night and let loose a tirade of angry messages. They primarily, of course, consisted of how creepy and disgusting I was for recording her. Again, I recorded her because I knew she'd lie, and all she did was prove my point, to which, despite still cussing me out, she had no actual response. 
I heard from her Anne and Paul that things are understandably awkward after what I'd shared, but she's still staying with them. They've not discussed it with her beyond letting her know they'd heard the recording and now knew she'd lie, but there has been no indication of negative consequences. And that's it. I'm reeling from four years of a relationship being over, of my girlfriend and best friend using my trauma as a way to make me break up with her, and then pretending everything was okay, just to lie about me behind my back. But what's hurting me more is how I only now understand, from reading replies to my post and talking to my friends, that I was with yet another abuser, and I am nowhere near as strong, or as over what happened to me, as I thought. Thanks for your help. Thank you for listening to today's story. Have a nice day.